The idea of cybernetic implants has been explored in science fiction for many years, but it also has a long and rich history in science and philosophy. Why are humans so interested in cybernetic implants? What drives them to seek such modifications and transformations? Biotic implants and cybernetic implants are both types of devices that can enhance or modify the biological functions of living beings, such as humans, aliens, or animals. However, they have some differences in their applications, function, and effects. Here are some of the main differences between them. Biotic implants are made of biological materials, such as cells, tissues, organs, or DNA, that are compatible with the host organism. They are designed to mimic or replace the natural functions of the organism, such as vision, hearing, or metabolism. They are usually implanted for medical reasons, such as to treat diseases, injuries, or disabilities. They are more likely to be accepted by the body's immune system, as they are similar to its own cells, and are more likely to adapt and grow with it, as they are based on living systems. Cybernetic implants are made of synthetic materials, such as metals, ceramics, or electronics, that are integrated with the host organism's nervous system. They are designed to enhance or modify the natural functions, such as strength, speed, or memory, and are usually implanted for personal reasons, such as to improve performance or experience. Cybernetic implants are more likely to be rejected by the immune system, as they are foreign to the body and more likely to degrade and malfunction with the host organism, as they are based on mechanical systems. For example, in the game Mass Effect, biotic implants are made with element zero nodules that react to electrical signals from the brain and allow some individuals to manipulate Mass Effect fields with their minds. These implants enhance the biotic potential of the user and grant them various powers, such as lift, throw, warp, or singularity. On the other hand, cybernetic implants in the game Deus Ex are known as augmentations and can enhance the physical and mental capabilities of the user, such as cloaking, hacking, regeneration, or social enhancement. These implants create a symbiosis between the user and the technology and require constant maintenance and regulation. Another difference between biotic implants and cybernetic implants is their impact on the identity and health of the user. Biotic implants are generally more compatible with the user's biology and do not cause significant changes in their appearance or personality. However, biotic implants can also have negative consequences, such as addiction, rejection, infection, corruption, or loss of control. Cybernetic implants are more invasive and can alter the user's appearance and personality drastically. However, they can also offer more benefits, such as increased longevity, adaptability, or immunity. Although they may offer unprecedented opportunities for human enhancement and transcendence, they may also pose significant risks and ethical dilemmas. Therefore, it is important to carefully consider the benefits and drawbacks of cybernetic implants before adopting them. Behind humanity's interest in cybernetic implants is to explore new frontiers of science and technology. They can also offer a way to transcend the biological boundaries of human existence and create new forms of life and intelligence. They can expand the possibilities and potentials of human evolution and innovation, as well as generate new knowledge and insights about the nature of life and intelligence. The idea of cybernetic implants has been explored in science fiction for many years, but it also has a long and rich history in science and philosophy. One of the earliest references to this concept can be traced back to the 17th century, when the French philosopher and mathematician René Descartes proposed that the human body was a complex machine that could be modified and improved by artificial means. He wrote, I suppose the body to be nothing but a statue or machine made of earth, which God forms with the explicit intention of making it as much as possible like us. In the 19th century, the idea of cybernetic implants was further developed by the British scientist and inventor Charles Babbage, who is considered to be the father of modern computing. He designed and partially built a mechanical device called the analytical engine, which was capable of performing complex calculations and storing data. He also envisioned a device called the difference engine, which could automatically produce mathematical tables. Babbage believed that these machines could be used to enhance human intelligence and creativity. He wrote, 
The analytical engine weaves algebraical patterns just as the jacquard loom weaves flowers and leaves. In the 20th century, the term cybernetics was coined by the American mathematician and philosopher Norbert Wiener, who defined it as the scientific study of control and communication in the animal and the machine. Wiener was interested in the similarities and differences between biological and artificial systems and how they could interact and influence each other. He also speculated about the possibility of creating artificial intelligence and artificial life, as well as enhancing human capabilities with electronic devices. He wrote, We are not stuff that abides, but patterns that perpetuate themselves. The idea of cybernetic implants became more popular and widespread in the second half of the 20th century, especially with the advent of new technologies such as microelectronics, biotechnology, nanotechnology, and neurotechnology. Some examples of cybernetic implants that have been developed or proposed include Cochlear implants. These are devices that are surgically implanted in the inner ear to provide a sense of sound to people who are deaf or severely hard of hearing. They work by converting sound waves into electrical signals that stimulate the auditory nerve directly. Brain-Computer Interfaces These are devices that allow a direct communication between the brain and a computer or other external device. They can be used for various purposes, such as controlling prosthetic limbs, restoring lost sensory or motor functions, enhancing cognitive or emotional abilities, or creating virtual reality experiences. Some of the drawbacks and challenges of cybernetic implants, both from a medical and a cultural perspective, are portrayed in the movie Sound of Metal, which tells the story of Ruben, a drummer who faces life-changing situations after he begins to experience a hearing loss. The movie explores his journey of coping with his new reality. Biotic implants are a common theme in literature and film, especially in the genres of science fiction and cyberpunk. The concept of biotics and the ability of some life forms to create and manipulate mass effect fields using element zero nodules embedded in their body tissues is one of the most distinctive aspects of the mass effect universe. Let's dive into the science behind biotics and element zero, as well as their implications for the gameplay, story, and themes of the mass effect series. Element zero, or ESO, is a rare material that has the property of increasing or decreasing the mass of an object when subjected to an electrical current. This phenomenon is known as the mass effect, and it is the basis for most of the technology in the mass effect universe, such as faster than light travel, artificial gravity, and energy shields. Element zero can be found naturally in some planets, asteroids, or stars, or artificially created by nuclear fusion or fission. Element zero can also affect organic life forms in various ways. Biotics are individuals who have been exposed to element zero, either naturally or artificially, and have developed ESO nodules throughout their nervous systems. These nodules can generate mass effect fields when energized by electrical impulses from the brain. Biotics can use these fields to perform various feats, such as lifting, throwing, or shielding objects, creating gravitational vortices or spatial distortions, or enhancing their physical abilities. Biotics can also use bioamps, devices that amplify their neural signals and allow them to access more powerful and diverse biotic abilities. Biotics are not equally common among all species in the Mass Effect universe. The Asari are the only species that are naturally biotic from birth, due to their homeworld Thesha having a high concentration of element zero in its environment. The Asari have a high degree of control over their biotics and use them for various purposes, such as combat, diplomacy, art, or entertainment. The Asari also have a unique biotic ability called melding, which allows them to share thoughts and memories with another being through physical contact. Other species can become biotic through exposure to element zero during their fetal development or later in life. However, this process is not always successful or safe. Many fetuses exposed to element zero die or develop deformities or diseases. Only a small percentage of them develop stable and strong biotic abilities that can be trained and enhanced. Some species, such as humans, Turians, Krogan, and Quarians, have experimented with artificial methods to induce biotics in their populations, such as genetic engineering, implants, drugs, or radiation. These methods often have negative side effects, such as infertility, 
reduced emotions, addiction, or insanity. Biotics play an important role in the gameplay, story, and themes of the Mass Effect series. In terms of gameplay, they are one of the main classes that players can choose for their character. Biotics can use various abilities to attack enemies, support allies, or manipulate the environment. They can also combine their abilities to create powerful combos that deal extra damage or effects. Some of the earliest references to the idea of biotic implants are. In 1935, the American writer Olaf Stapledon published a novel called Odd John, which features a character named John Wainwright, who was born with extraordinary mental abilities due to a mutation. John uses his powers to manipulate matter and energy, create telepathic links, and influence other people's minds. He also invents various devices to enhance his senses and abilities, such as a helmet that amplifies his brainwaves and a suit that protects him from harm. In 1956, the British writer Arthur C. Clarke published a short story called The City and the Stars, which depicts a far future civilization where humans live in a domed city called Diaspar. The inhabitants of Diaspar have access to a technology called the Hall of Creation, which allows them to design and create any object they desire including biotic implants that can modify their appearance, physiology, and abilities. For example, some people choose to have wings, gills, or enhanced senses. In 1966, the American writer Philip K. Dick published a novel called We Can Build You, which deals with the theme of androids and artificial intelligence. The novel features a character named Pre Frauenzimmer, who undergoes a series of biotic implants to become more like an android. She receives a synthetic skin, a mechanical heart, a neural network, and a memory chip that contains the personality of Abraham Lincoln. Just like biotics, the idea of cybernetic implants is still evolving and expanding in the 21st century as new technologies emerge and new challenges arise. In 1972, the American writer Martin Kaiden published a novel called Cyborg, which introduces the character of Steve Austin, a former astronaut who was severely injured in a crash and is rebuilt with biotic implants that give him superhuman strength, speed, and vision. The novel was the basis for the popular TV series The Six Million Dollar Man and its spin-off The Bionic Woman. The future of cybernetic implants may offer unprecedented opportunities for human enhancement and transcendence, but it may also pose significant risks and ethical dilemmas. As Nick Bostrom and Julian Savulesca write, Human enhancement is one of those topics where opinions tend to diverge sharply. Some see it as an exciting prospect full of promise, others regard it with horror or revulsion. Yet others are simply puzzled or perplexed. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. You can also leave a comment if you have any suggestions for future topics. Thank you for watching. Until next time, stay curious and keep looking up.